Uh, Pippians. The common feel frog. Now, as you all can see, little Freddy is dead. Very dead. Dead little Freddy. And in a few moments, you will all have the unique pleasure as we try to discover what makes Freddy Freddy as we split him open on your desks. Hey everyone, this is Bob Bedore from Quick Quits going back to school for SLC Nerds 31 Screams. Today I'm going to be talking about 1987's classic Return to Horror High. Now, no, this isn't a sequel to the 70s horror flick called Horror High. Great movie, but no, this is actually its own stand-apart movie. The return they're talking about, well, it's about a film crew that goes back to a place where a slasher killed a lot of victims and wants to make a movie about it. That kind of sounds a little familiar. Seems like it's from somewhere. How familiar? Well, take a look at the killers from both of these movies. That'll give you an idea of just how familiar this is to Scream 3. Now, I'm not going to tell you that this movie is better than Scream 3. They're, they're both good. They're both different. This one, though, well, much like the other, it is a horror-slash-comedy. What's my motivation? You're dead. Dead people have no motivation. And uh, it's, it's very meta. How meta is it? Well, how about the fact that it's George Clooney's first movie? I thought it was Oliver. Yeah, well, Oliver's over here where he's supposed to be. And uh, oh, look what happens to him. Gonna be a star, Oliver? Gonna try. That's right. Even then, they knew that he was going to be a big star. However, George Clooney wasn't around very long. Although, it's fun to note that the poster for the original movie had no mention of George Clooney. However, the DVD later when it came out, George Clooney gets top billing. The film also has a cameo by Maureen McCormick, you know, Marsha from the Brady Bunch. Yeah, you're right about that. Who knew that she was such a freak for blood? <laughs> what the hell happened to you? There is blood everywhere. Slippery, just fell. I slid from Greenway's chemistry class all the way to Bronson Hans English. This movie has everything you'd expect from the 80s. It's got, uh, well, bad acting. It's got some pretty cool deaths. And uh, it's got the, well, the, probably one of the world's first briefcase cell phone type things. I'm not even sure what that was supposed to be or if it was really working. And believe me, I was old enough in the 80s. I should take that back. The movie has almost everything. How, how do we fill out the reports? We got no forms to cover this. And while I can't say that this is probably one of the best 80s slasher flicks, I'm not sure that's what the director was really going for with this movie. It's not the movie I'm making. I, I like this movie. But it is a lot of fun to watch. It's really mind trippy the way you never know if it's what you're watching is what's really happening or a movie being filmed or a flashback or a flash forward. It's kind of crazy that way. And uh, it's, it's probably got one of the best twist endings of the 80s or, or several. I mean, there, there's more than one twist ending in this movie. And it's worth watching just for the crazy uh, job done by the principal in this movie. Yeah. wedding ceremony. This has been Bob Bedore. That was Return to Horror High. Go check it out because it's a fun movie from the 80s and it's one of SLC Nerds 31 Screams. Good clean hit.